Hi, my name is Hannah and I'm with the Watershed Stewards Program and today I'm going to be talking about the external and internal anatomy of a salmon. So we will start out with the external anatomy and then in the next part um, I will cut the fish open and we will talk about internal anatomy um, and I'll show how to do a dissection. So to start out, we are going to be talking about the slime on a fish. So he has a very slimy coating right now and it has a couple of different purposes. Firstly, is to keep it slippery um, so that it can escape from predators more easily. So if a bear or a seal or even a human tries to catch it, it'll just be able to slip out of the hands or the paws of whatever is trying to catch it. Secondly, it helps it be uh, more streamlined through the water. Um, it kind of takes away the, some of the friction so that the fish can move more easily through the water. And then thirdly, it helps combat infection. So you can see this fish has some fungus growing on it and that's because it that happened toward the end of its life and fish uh, fungus tries to grow on fish quite a bit so the slime is what will keep it from growing on it throughout most of its life. And that's similar to humans we have mucus in our nose and throat that helps fight off infections. So those are the three uh, things that slime does. Next is the scales. So you can see fish is covered in a bunch of tiny bony scales and that is for protection. They're pretty hard and they also are useful for fish biologists to be able to tell uh, the life history of a specific fish. So they're similar to tree rings in that if you take a scale and look at it under a microscope you'll see a bunch of different rings and si uh, salmon biologists can use that to determine the age of the fish if it's a hatchery fish or a wild fish, and how long it's spent in salt water. All right, next we're gonna talk about fins. This guy has two pectoral fins and two pelvic fins, and these are both used for uh, direction and stability. Also has one anal fin, which is used to help keep the fish upright in the water. It's got this fin on the top of it called the dorsal fin, and that helps steer the fish and also aids in stability. And then there's the caudal fin, which is the tail, and this is gonna be what propels the fish forward in the water. So the fish tail is gonna move like this, and it pushes the fish forward. And then finally, we have the adipose fin. And the adipose fin is interesting because it's a vestigial fin, which means that it doesn't have any known purpose for the fish right now. It may have had a purpose somewhere way down the line back in evolutionary, evolutionary history, but it doesn't anymore. So what hatchery managers do now is they will clip the fin, the adipose fin of a hatchery fish, so that if someone catches it, they'll be able to tell whether it's a hatchery fish or a wild fish. Next, if you can get a little closer, we have the lateral line, which runs right here. It's this sort of dark row of scales. And that is a really interesting sensory organ that fish have. Um, and it kind of helps, it's kind of a combination of sight and sound and touch in that it helps sense vibrations and changes in water pressure so that fish can tell if there is a predator nearby or prey or something, or if the water is really dark, they can use the lateral lines to be able to tell where to go even if they can't see. So speaking of senses, we're gonna move on to the head and the eye. We have the fish's eye right here. Um, it's actually pretty big compared to the rest of the size of the fish. And that is because salmon are visual predators, so eyesight is important to them. They use their eyes to hunt. You can also see that salmon have eyes on both sides of their heads. Unlike humans, we have eyes on the front of our heads. This gives salmon monocular vision, which means that they see out of each eye separately to make two different images, versus humans which have binocular vision, which means that we see out of both eyes making one continuous image. Moving down, we can see the nostrils or nares 
as they're called in fish. And what's unique about salmon compared to humans is that they don't breathe through their nostrils. They do use them to smell though. And the sense of smell is actually really important for salmon because they rely on their sense of smell to find their natal stream when they are returning home to spawn. So that means that when they come back from the ocean, they use their sense of smell to find the familiar smell of the stream that they were born in and be able to head back there, even if it's been years since they've been there. Unlike humans, they don't breathe through their nostrils, they breathe through their gills, which are in here. And I think I will cut, this is called the operculum right here. It's the bony plate that covers the gills. And I think I'm gonna cut out some of the gills so that we can see them a little bit better. All right, so here is one of the gills. This is called the gill arch. It holds these structures, which are called the gill filaments, and these have a lot of surface area so that when the fish breathes in water, these are able to extract the oxygen from the water so that the fish can breathe. So that's a lot different from humans. We have lungs to extract oxygen from the air. And then these things on this side, they're kind of, they're sharp and they kind of look like teeth. These are called gill rakers and they help keep food from coming in this way and getting in the gills and well actually if something like a small uh, macroinvertebrate a small water bug goes in there it'll actually the gill rakers will make sure they go down the throat rather than get in the way of the gills so that's about it for the external anatomy so next time we're going to go into the internal anatomy with a dissection <laughs>